Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video on Garmin's LiveScope Perspective Mode. I did a video a few years ago when the LiveScope first came out called LiveScope Everything You Need to Know. So hopefully you've seen that. If you haven't, take a look. It'll be linked in the description below. Right now we're looking at the Live View Forward. Well, Garmin has stepped it up yet again and given us another view called LiveScope Perspective, which is probably why you're watching this video to find out more on it. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna get into that. First, I wanna just kinda of do a little bit of uh, background on what the perspective mode is. So just take a look at this quick. The LiveScope Perspective Mount basically adds a pivot point to the transducer to allow you to use it vertically in the forward and down view, but now also horizontally in the perspective view. This new mount rotates the transducer 90 degrees and gives you 150 degrees of coverage around the boat. You'll have this new perspective mode on the bottom right there. Before we get to that, I want to just show you how to check your software version. If you go to settings, you go to system, and then you go to system information and software information, you'll see there this is version 18.1. So that's the minimum you're going to need to get this. If you don't have that, go online, download the update. I'll also have a video link in the description for another video I did on how to update the software on a Garmin unit. So back to our home screen here, let's get into the perspective mode. So if you haven't seen it yet, this is it. This is live sonar right in front of your boat in real time. Um, I should say in front of your boat, basically anywhere that your transducer is pointed in the top right of the corner there, you'll see the orientation icon up there just to show you which direction it's facing. Now it's not synced up with the simulator, but uh, it kind of gives you the idea of what it's going to look like. So you can see we're looking at uh, an old foundation there to the left with some debris out in front of it there. Um, doesn't look like there's any fish or anything in this particular view. And now you can see the trolling motor spinning right around. Now the foundation's on our right right in front of us there in pretty high detail. So if there were fish swimming around, you'd see them moving. Uh, you may even pick up your lure with this. Haven't really seen anything on that yet. Hopefully it will. So let's get into the settings on this. Uh, we're gonna get into the menu here and I'm just gonna go through them setting by setting. So gain, we have just like in live scope, we have our three autos. So low, medium, and then high. And then we can also manually adjust it however we choose. I'm always a fan of using um, manual mode, it definitely does uh, increase the amount you have to play with the unit, but um, I, I think you do get a better image. Just for the sake of the video, just to keep everything consistent so we don't have to mess around with it too much, I'm going to leave it in auto. Now our range is the next thing we have. Again, we have an auto mode, which is how it defaults, and then you can increase or decrease that in the menu here. I'm going to put that back to auto. Um, also. On your screen here you can increase or decrease that now if we go all the way out here you can see basically that line about middle of the screen horizontally at 80 feet that's really where the the maximum amount of detail is we're not getting too much beyond that so I think you're kind of going to be limited to about 80 100 feet with this in really high detail so I've kind of zoomed in now to about 90 feet, or I guess changed my range to about 90 feet there. And that's primarily where all the detail is going to be. So, you know, if you wanted to see that foundation in a little bit more detail, you can zoom right in on it. Now I'm going to go back to the auto and show you another feature, a similar type feature is your zoom. Pinch the screen and do your pinch zoom. And I know this isn't the, the greatest detail, but you'll see that little box up on the top corner there. You can kind of zoom around and see if there's you know anything within that box that you wanted to take a look at. It's kind of hard while it is moving around. So next in our menu, we have transmit sonar. This is just enabling or disabling it. Something you'll probably not use very often with this. Um, only time really I think you'd use that is if you lift up your trolling motor and want to disable the sonar while you're traveling. Next here, we'll get into the sonar setup. And first thing, first thing we have is appearance and color scheme. And just like all of our Garmin products and Garmin sonar views, we can look at all these different color schemes. Uh, what I might do is just put a few of them at the end for you, just so you can kind of take a look and see uh, what they, they look like together. I like the blue a lot and the copper a lot. I find that those two are just the easiest for my eyes to see in most conditions. You might find something different, but whatever works for you doesn't really make any difference there. So I'm probably gonna just leave it on the, the copper. Oops, I'm gonna leave it on the copper for now. Now color gain, again, uh, you have your default, which is 50%. We can go up or down 
And that's just going to be the intensity of the targets more than anything. So you can kind of play around with that where you like. You know, generally somewhere around the 50% mark is where you're going to find that that works best in most cases. Trails, uh, just like in our traditional um, pan optics, like I'm talking traditional, traditional, the original pan optics, you can see that. It's kind of up to you what you want there. I don't really like it too much in, in this view. There's a few different settings there to, uh, to see how long that those trails last. I'm probably going to recommend you turn that off. Um, the grid as well, we've got a couple options now, so we can turn it off. We can show the grid like uh, we've had on so far, and then radial as well. This one's kind of neat just to give you an idea as to, to where different objects are. I think this will also be helpful with casting angles, just based on where your, your um, trolling motor's pointed. You can then adjust based on that. So I'm gonna leave it on radial from here on out. Um, your boat icon, that's just up in the top right corner. I gotta get out of the menu to, uh, to show you that. So there, it's on. I'm gonna leave that on just so we know kind of what direction we're facing there. So that's everything in the appearance. Noise rejection, again, just like all other sonar, we've got our different different levels and you can just play around with that as you need it. Um, I would recommend the lower the better. Your time varying gain as well. Just like traditional live scope, we've got our few different settings in there. Overlay data. So these are just on the top left, you'll see them all disappearing. You can leave those on, turn them off, whatever you wanna do there. Now installation, uh, use AHRS, so Attitude Heading Reference Sensor. That's the compass that's built into these transducers. You may have to turn that on or off just depending on whether or not you're getting interference from your trolling motor. And then if it's turned off, you have the flipped option on or off so you can flip the uh, image around, calibrate compass. You can calibrate that as well, just with the standard procedure, like calibrating any other compass, like a steady cast. So you're just gonna follow the instructions on the screen there. You have your focus as well. You can play around with that. And in all honesty, I haven't really played with this too much to see a difference there. Auto fresh, auto salt. I think it's more just how the sonar signal is sent out. So I would recommend just auto. Now, if you get so far that you just don't like how things look, you can go restore sonar defaults and just bring it right back to factory settings like where we started from. So there you go. That's just the basics on what's in the menu on this unit and this new perspective mode that they have for live scope. Uh, a couple things I wanted to do now is just show you a couple screens I like. So I've already pre-programmed them in the combo section. So if you go to combos on the right, hit menu, add combo, um, you can change your layout in here however you choose and then you just tap on it to add whatever info you want and if you go under sonar right at the bottom that's where you'll find live scope perspective uh, for this case I'm just gonna build one real quick just so I get that that done so you can see but getting back to the ones I pre-programmed just talk about those really quickly uh, this one's for side imaging so if I have my Garmin force transducer connected or just my GT 52 54 off the back I can uh, view that side imaging and keep an idea of what's going on to the sides of the boat and seeing that history image and then looking live ahead of my boat with the uh, perspective mode. And again, you can even see something on the side imaging and then point your trolling motor towards that and you'll then see it in the perspective mode. And of course, having your map on the screen just to see where you are in orientation to everything. This combo as well, I, I really like. Uh, we've got our perspective mode, chirp sonar, down view sonar and then the the map so this is good if you're fishing a lot of vertical structure kind of keep an eye on everything that's going on there and this one here for drop shotting is really nice got your sonar on the right perspective on the left just keeping an eye of what's coming up ahead of you so you can kind of see what's going on below you on top of that structure that you've seen with the perspective mode so there you go guys that is Garmin's new perspective mode for the live scope um, let me know what you think. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think of this and uh, seeing if you guys are going to be putting this on your boat. And what do you guys think about this compared to 360 from Hummingbird, the Mega 360 from Hummingbird? Um, I've got a video on that comparing those two technologies as well, so you want to take a look at that. And if you haven't seen that live scope video I did, take a look at this here. And then this video will compare live scope with live sight. So take a look at that, see what's going to be on your boat, whether it's going to be Garmin, Hummingbird, Lowrance. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And as always, let me know what you think in the comments below.